this is Randall and Glenda with KravmagaTraining.com and in this video I'm going to address how to defend a handgun threat from behind when it's touching you, uh, but specifically all the details to how you control it properly because I found out all the components to this particular defense, that's the part where uh, students have the most trouble. So let me explain. As you guys know, there's four important principles to every uh, Krav Maga gun defense. So the first one obviously is redirecting line of fire. So I take my look, I redirect it, I'm not in front of it anymore. Now, principle number two is to control the weapon. And this is the part that I want to get into. This is the part where people screw up the most. Okay, the first thing is, make sure that when you go, after you redirect it, to reach in deep, reach in towards the person's armpit. Don't make the mistake of just going directly for the wrist because as I'm stepping in, she, yeah, she's going to be really natural. She's going to be fighting back. She sees, she recognizes that threat. She recoils. I miss it. Now I have no control and I'm in danger. So it's very, very important, as we've discussed before, you reach into the armpit. So as she's recoiling the weapon back, I can catch it and I can always slide back out. I'd rather be in too deep because I can always correct it by sliding out, whereas if I miss it, obviously I can't go back in. And the key is when you slide out, even if I'm up too high like this, is to keep control of the arm the whole time. Notice how I'm making a fist, I'm curling it down, I'm sliding it down until it hooks the wrist. Now a real big problem beginner mistake is they want to use their hands too much. They cup it and they grab it like this, like they're hooking it like this. You're not doing that because you don't have maximum strength in the control. Instead, think about your hugging it to your chest. That's why you just make a fist, overlap it on the top, and hug it down really tight. Don't, don't grab it. Your hand shouldn't be open. You use that more for like long gun defenses, but for this particular one, tight fist. Use your fist, use your arm to curl it in. Okay, now, here's a few, a few uh, important details. First of all, when you slide it down, you want to catch it at the wrist, just like if you're putting handcuffs up someone. You want to hook the wrist because that's the thinnest part of their arm. It's a lot thinner than up here. It's a lot thinner than the hand, so it catches right there, and that's what will give you the maximum amount of control. That's why when people put handcuffs on it, they go around the wrist. Well, same concept here. I want to be around the wrist. If we're up too high like this, I don't have any control. She can point the gun at my head very easily. This is a big issue. But at the same time, I don't want to slide out too far. This is a common mistake, too. Is students will think they're sliding down, but then they go over the hand like this, and I'm not hooking her wrist anymore. Very easy. Yeah, she can just slide that weapon out very easily. So I need to hook at the wrist here, so when she tries to pull the weapon out, see how it catches right there. Now, here's another important detail is make sure that your elbow isn't flared out like this. I don't feel like it's very tight. Can you move the weapon around a little bit? It's just, yeah, there's too much give here. Another important detail is to take this elbow and anchor it into your ribs like this wide hug. So when you do this, you'll have a lot more control. Now, a very, very important detail, and I'm a big, big, big fan of this. I probably uh, emphasize this more than most Krav Maga instructors, and that is shoulder pressure. Here's the front of my shoulder. I like to take that front of the shoulder, and I lean it forward like this. Not only does it put pressure on her wrist, but it helps me get more control of the weapon and keep the line of fire off to the side. If I keep my shoulder relaxed like this, she can move the weapon around a lot more. If I do this, it tends to lock into place. And I found also when you, when you get into sparring and get into some resistance with your partner, that if you take the shoulder and you drive it forward, it's harder for them to punch the weapon through to counter it. And this is what I mean is, most bad guys will try to pull it away like this and you'll catch it. But when you start doing resistance and your partner starts to get sneaky, what they'll do, what Glenda will do, is she'll take her hand and actually punch it forward. Go ahead and punch it forward, Glenda. Now she can, ah, she can point it back in here, switch hands, big problem. A lot, a lot of people don't think about that. If, if somebody's clever, they're going to do that to you. So I can't just defend against it being pulled backwards. I need to also address them possibly punching forward if they're smart, especially if they decide to get aggressive with me and start fighting me back. I prevent that by taking that shoulder, rolling it forward. So now when she tries to punch it, my shoulder blocks it. She tries to pull it, it locks into place. If this hand is overlapped on the top, like we were, I, I mentioned earlier, she can't pull it up either. Don't leave it hanging up like this. Now she can punch it up and I can lose that as well. And then the elbow, that has to be it too, because she, now she can slide it down. If I anchor the elbow into the ribs, that gets sealed off too. So all those little details basically address how to shut her potential uh, ways of getting this weapon free in all different directions. Hooking the wrist prevents it going this way. Rolling your shoulder forward prevents her from punching it. 
anchoring the elbow prevents it from going down, and curling the wrist over and making a tight fist prevents it from going up. So these are very important details to seal it in place all around. Now I'm going to backtrack and go back to the shoulder pressure. I think this is really important for a couple of reasons. One is, if my shoulder's relaxed, I tend to be bladed to uh, my attacker, and I don't like this. I want it to be squared up. I want to be at 12 o'clock when I fight them. I do this by rolling my shoulder forward when I control her. When I do this, when she's at my 12 o'clock, I have more weapons used, like my head buds, my knees, more elbows. When I'm turned sideways like this, now she has more weapons. Oh, she's, yeah, this is a problem. I want to be squared up. And even more so, check this out. We'll back up here a little bit. I don't have to stay directly in front of her. I can angle off off to the side because she does have a free hand over there. Let's go on the second one. You start sparring, getting some resistance, start fighting. We're squared up. Yeah, she can hit me, I can hit her, but let's cheat a little bit. If I roll that shoulder forward, watch how I can angle out. Stay away from her free hand, which gives me more options, gives her less options. The rule is in all fighting is I want my opponent at my 12 o'clock as much as possible. However, we need to flip that. I want to not be at my attacker's 12 o'clock. I want to be as far away as possible from that. So, by punching that shoulder forward, it allows me to move him off to the side and get away from her 12 o'clock. So I can still attack her and fight her, but she can't fight back as easily. Now, if I did this without her, this all I'm doing is I'm taking the shoulder, rolling it forward, like I'm trying to make my chin touch my shoulder. I'm just doing this using like really bad posture. We're just talking, you know, stand up straight like this. You're basically doing this. That's all it is. You do that subtle little detail, and it makes a big difference on controlling that weapon. So I'm a really big fan of that. Here's another reason why I'm a big fan of this, is this. I see this happen a lot. When we get into the takeaway, if you don't have that good shoulder pressure, and keeping your attacker at 12 o'clock, I see this a lot. They go for the gun, and look how my back is turned. This is a problem for a lot of reasons. One, if she decides to get aggressive with me, it's hard for me to turn around and attack her again. If I keep her at my 12 o'clock, I go for this, and I realize she's fighting back. She's very easily, I can start fighting back to her hammer fist, go back to tying up. But I can see that. If I turn like this with my back turned on the line, I don't know what she's doing to me. And also, it makes me a lot more vulnerable for her to potentially take me down. If I turn my back like this, she can bear hug me, shoot in. If she bear hugs around me, she can switch the weapon over to the other hand. Lots of potential issues with this. If I keep her at my 12 o'clock, it allows me to keep my form down a lot easier. So while I'm going for the weapon, if I see, her, see how I can drop my form back down. So I'm here, I'm going for the weapon, I see she's trying to tie it with me. I can control her again. And it all has to do with that shoulder pressure again, keeping her at 12 o'clock. So those are a lot of little details, but I think they're all very important. And like I said earlier in the video, I have all the principles, redirect, control, counterattack, takeaway, disarm. That's the part that gets screwed the most is the controlling aspect. So that's why I decided to, with this particular video, is to really emphasize all those key things. So practice all that. Be aware of all those little things, the shoulder pressure, curling the hand over, anchoring the elbow, keeping your partner at 12 o'clock, all these little details. And if you do that in the long run, especially when you start like asking your partner to start resisting, and not letting you take the weapon away to make it more realistic, you'll find these little details will come in handy, especially even more so. Start putting on uh, headgear, put on some gloves, start sparring and fighting, then it becomes essential, just like a real fight. So anyways, I know this is a long-winded video, but to me those are all very, very important parts to controlling the weapon properly with this particular um, gun defense. So uh, thanks for watching, hope that helps.